to so, how do you mean? Well, for instance, Mr. Kirby getting into the patrol wagon and the look on his face when he and Donald had to take a bath together. Uh, I don't think I'll forget that if I live to be a hundred. And mind you, people, I intend to. If I can have things like that going on. Oh, what's even worse is Mrs. Kirby. When the matron stripped her, there was a burlesque dancer there singing strip songs. Well, I suppose I better call that cab. Oh, uh, you know, wait, Paul. Maybe Tony has. Ed, will you go up and get my bag? Don't do it, Ed. Ed, please. All right, Ed. Bring him down. You know, you're the most stubborn daughter in all 48 states. Inventions and they fly the ocean. 
There's always people to go down to Wall Street, too, because they like it. But from what I've seen of you, Mr. Kirby, I don't think you're one of them. I think you're missing something. I'm not aware of missing anything. I wasn't either, till I quit. I used to wake up 9 o'clock sharp, sharp and go down to that office no matter how I felt. I lay awake at night for fear I wouldn't get that contract. So what I'm trying to say, Mr. Kirby, is that I have 35 years that nobody can take away from me, no matter what they do to the world, see? Yes, I do see. It's a very dangerous philosophy, Mr. Vanderhoff. It's, it's an American. And it's exactly why I'm opposed to this marriage. I don't want Tony to come under its influence. Father, what's so wrong with it? Downright communism, that's what it is. You didn't always think so. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You didn't always think so because there's a time when you wanted to be a trapeze artist. Why well, don't be an idiot, Tony? No, yes, you did. I saw those letters you wrote to grandfather. Do you remember those? No, how dare you read those letters? Did you wear tights, Mr. Kirby? <laughs> yes. No! The whole thing is absurd. I was 14 years old at the time. Yes, but at 16, you wanted to be a saxophone player. Tony! And at 21, you ran away from home because Grandfather wanted you to go into the business. It's all down there in black and white. You didn't always think so. Well, well, well. I may have had silly notions in my youth, but thank God my father knocked them out of me. I went into the business and forgot all about them. Not altogether, Father. There's still a saxophone in the back of your clothes closet. There is! No, I want to talk about it now. I think Mr. Vanderhoff is right. Dead right. I hate that office. I've always hated it. And I'm not going on with it. I'm clearing out. Clearing out? What do you mean? I mean, I'm not going into the business just because of your son. I'm getting out while there's still time. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. Maybe I'll be a bricklayer. But at least I'll be doing something I want to do.
relaxing, Colin Cobb. Ed, play something. Oh, now anybody can get me to that, Mr. Kirby. Uh, Penny, how about 
some dinner for these folks. It's a big pain for dinner, you know. Oh, please don't bother. We're not hungry at all. Oh, but it's not a bit of a bother. Ed! Ed, tell Donald to run down to the A&P and get half a dozen bottles of beer. And, um, some canned tuna. Do you like canned tuna, Mr. Kirby? Oh, please don't bother. I have a little indigestion anyway. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, how about you, Mrs. Kirby? Do you enjoy canned tuna? I'm very fond of it. You can have frankfurters if you'd rather. Either one will do. Well, make it frankfurters and some uh, cream corn and camel soup. Oh, and tell them to hurry. The AMP is just around the corner and frankfurters don't take any time at all to boil. Oh, there he is. Uh, Mr. Sycamore, may I introduce you to Mr. and Mrs. Kirby? How do you do? I hope you'll forgive my appearance. This is always Mr. Sycamore's busiest time of year. Just before the 4th of July, he always does this like, oh! thing. Oh, darling, I'm the most dull-witted person on earth. I thought it was tonight. Tony, I thought you were... Why, hello. Have you all had time to get acquainted? Uh, yes, indeed. How do you do, Alice? Oh, how do you do? Yes, uh, Mrs. Kirby. Oh, I'm afraid I'm not very presentable. Oh, darling, you look lovely. Well, of course she does. Please, dear, don't let, don't let this upset you. You just met another night sooner, that's all. Yes, but I was planning such a lovely party tomorrow night. Well, we'll come again tomorrow night. There, am I forgiven, darling? I suppose so. <laughs> we better see about getting you folks something to eat. Oh, that's all taken care of, us. Mother, what did you send out for? You see, Mr. Kirby has indigestion, oh, no. so he can only eat certain quite things. quite all right. I asked him what he wanted. Yes, Mother, but really, it's... Please, it's not as serious as all that, just because I have a little indigestion. Mr. Kirby, perhaps you do not have indigestion at all. Perhaps you have... Please, Madam Kolenkoff, don't be absurd. <coughs> you must admire Madame Kolenkoff, Mr. Kirby. She's, she's Russian, and Russians tend to look on the dark side. <laughs> I am a Russian, but a friend of mine, a Russian, died from stomach ulcer. Really? I, I... Madam Kolenkoff, please. Mr. Kirby has indigestion, and that's all. Mm-hmm. Let him wait. Um, uh, please, you have a seat, Mr. Kirby. Thank you. <clears throat> um, uh, tell me, Mr. Kirby, how are business conditions? Are we pretty well out of the depression? Uh, yes, I would say so. Uh, but you have to say, uh, things are going to keep on getting better. Uh, broadly speaking, yes. Uh, business conditions are now operating at 64% of full capacity. That was against 82% in 1925. But of course, in 1929, everything just kind of... <laughs> 